Howdy, howdy. This is Mr. Potter. We're continuing to work with this uh, painting program that we developed. Last time we got it to work, we tested some of the parameters on here. Uh, but I, I messed up on the, uh, the drawing of the uh, circles up here. I tried to do the fill rectangle and it wasn't working. I, I did want to kind of fill it. It's actually fill rect, not fill rectangle. And so what that'll do is that'll make rectangles that are four wide and four tall. What I'm going to do is, um, just to illustrate this a little bit clearer, I'm going to change the size to 10 and 10. And so now when I try and draw these rectangles, you can see that I end up with squares, rectangles, that each have a width of 10 pixels and a height of 10 pixels. So what I want to do today is I want to add a little splash of color because right now all that we can do is put black in here. There's nothing wrong with black, but it's nice to add a little bit of color to our surroundings. So in order to use color, I need to make sure that I'm importing java.awt.color. And I'm also going to be adding buttons that we can click on. So we'll be able to select our colors using those buttons. So I'm going to import javax.swing.jbutton. And because we've noticed that buttons look best when they're in a grid, we're going to uh, import javax.swing.jpanel, just to put all four of these buttons, we're going to do four colors here, in a panel. And we're going to go ahead and um, put these in a grid layout, so import java.awt.gridlayout. And then I also, because these buttons are going to be clickable, I need to make sure that I have action listeners. So I need to import java.awt.event.actionListener and import java.awt.event.actionEvent. So these are my import statements that I'm going to need for this program. Just adding the buttons, of course I need buttons. I'm going to put those buttons in a panel and I'm going to configure the panel to be a grid layout. And we're going to be using action listeners and action events because that's what buttons use. So in order to implement these buttons, I need to make sure that I implement action listener. And then in my painter, I need to go ahead and do this set the layout. So I've got this container C, which I'm going to add stuff to, but I also want a J panel, which I'll go ahead and call P. And I want to set the panels layout, so p.setLayout, to a new grid layout. And I want to do this, since I'm going to do four colors, I want to have four buttons, and I want to organize them vertically. So I actually want four rows in one column. And then I need to create the four buttons that we're going to be dealing with. So I'm going to say J button red gets new J button, and I'll just have it say red on it. But that may not be enough, so I can actually do red dot set background color to color dot red. So that way, not only will it say red, if I put this in quotes, not only will it say red on the button, but I'm actually going to set the background color to red as well. And I want to do the same thing for a couple of other colors, so I'm going to say J button yellow gets new J button yellow and yellow dot and this should be lowercase set background color to color dot yellow and I can do the same thing for, I'm going to do blue and black because I want to be able to return to black so J button black or blue gets new J button blue, but I want to illustrate the other constructor that we have. So blue dot set background color. The thing is, if I don't want to use the color constants, and if you look in the color class, you'll see all of the different uh, color constants. You also see them on the APIs. Uh, I can do new color, and I can give it the parameters that I want. Now remember that when we were doing colors, we saw with the pixels we had a red, a green, and a blue value. So I'm going to use that constructor to create the color. Now my color, the color that I'm going to choose is a shade of blue that I like. So I'm going to do 51, 51, and 204. Remember that for colors we're dealing with red, green, and blue components. And then close for the call and semicolon. And then I'm going to do J button 
black gets new J button with black on it and black dot set background color to and I just do color dot black because I'm not feeling very original right now. So I've created these four buttons and now I want to add them to the pane that we created. So P dot add red, P dot add yellow, P dot add blue, and P dot add black. And so that's going to add those four buttons to this. So I've added it the buttons to the pane and now I want to make sure that I add the pane to the container, our, our frames uh, content pane. So I'm going to say C dot add and I want to add P and I'm going to add it to border layout dot east because I want it to be on the right side of our uh, container. Now in order to get the action listener to work, I need to make sure that I put triggers on these buttons as well. Each of these buttons should trigger the action listener method action performed. So I want to do red dot add action listener this. I'm going to do blue dot add action listener this. I want to do yellow dot add action listener this. And I want to do black dot add action listener this. <clears throat> and so that's going to allow us to have buttons that do things when they're clicked. Now, because I'm implementing the action listener interface, I need to make sure that I call upon action performed whenever these buttons are clicked. So I need to go ahead and get that set up. So I'm going to have public void action performed with action event E. And I'm going to leave it empty for right now. I just want to make sure this compiles. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. It's not background color, it's just set background. So let me try that. It should have been just red dot set background, yellow dot set background, blue dot set background, and yellow dot set background. And that should work. Hmm. Not seeing anything being added to the pane, and that's an issue. So <clears throat> let me take a look at this. I've got J panel gets new J panel. I'm setting the layout to a new grid layout. I'm adding red, setting the background. I add all of those to my panel P. I add panel P to my container C. I added a mouse motion listener to this. I'm not sure why that's not working. So I'm going to have to pause for a second and figure out why this isn't working. All right, so I've done a little experimenting. I'm not sure exactly what the problem is. I'm going to run the program once more, and I want to show you what's happening here. It actually does open up a window here, and nothing's apparent until I move the mouse over where these buttons are, and then these buttons show up. So you can see the buttons here. I've got a red button here, yellow button here, blue, and black. Right now they don't do anything because I haven't done the action uh I haven't done the action performed method yet. So that's something we're going to have to do. Now, when I choose one of those buttons, I'm going to be choosing a color. And I'm going to be using the color in my paint method. So because I need the color to transmit from this action performed to the paint method, I'm going to need this to be an instance variable and not just some parameter. So I'm going to create an instance variable private color call. So I'm calling my color col. And then in my action performed method, I'm going to get that color from the uh, from the action command. So I'm going to say string act gets e dot get action command. That way I have the action command stored in a variable that I can test. So now I'm going to say if act dot equals blue, so if I end up hitting the blue button, then I want my color 
to be equal to that special color that I made, the new color with a red component of 51, a green component of 51, and a blue component of 204. Remember these are out of the 0 to 255 range that we were talking about uh, when we were doing our picture lab. Else, I probably should end that with a semicolon, that would be helpful. Else, if act dot equals red, then I want my color to be equal to color dot red. And I'm just talking about the constant color dot red that red has. Remember that the color class has about 20 different colors, and you can check the API for that. Else, if act dot equals blue, I'm not blue, yellow, then I want my color to be equal to color dot yellow. And then my final thing, uh, basically, if none of these three were the color that I chose, choose black. And so I'm going to say call is going to be color dot black. So this is the color that I'm going to be hitting uh, as my default color. And you know, if you're using Java 1.7, you could use a case statement to switch through all of these, or switch statement to go through all the different cases. Um, that's if you wanted to set up more than just four buttons. But now that I've set up color, I want to go to my paint method and I want to change the color. So I'm going to do g.setColor to call, whatever call was set to. So that means that in my default constructor, I probably should go ahead and set that equal to some color. Let's just say color.black as our initial color. So let's try this and see what this does. So again, I'm not going to see the buttons until I mouse over them. So red, yellow, blue, and green, black. And then when I draw, here's my black, and I'm going to click the red button. So now red is my selected color, and notice that I'm making red squares out of this. Selecting the yellow button gets me yellow squares, selecting the blue gives me my special shade of blue that I was talking about, and selecting black gets me back to my black. So I can move between any of these four colors, and I could always add more buttons. I, if you've done a lot of the uh, painting programs, have like 16 different colors you could choose from, as well as some user-defined colors. So I could set up a blank button that would change the color based on some uh, text fields, some of the J text fields that we've talked about, to add a red, blue, green component to it. So um, I'm going to continue to investigate why these buttons don't pop up at the very beginning, why this J label doesn't pop up at the very beginning. I'm hoping to have an answer for you in our next video. Um, but this is the idea here is that, you know, we've talked about how I can change the color. We've also talked about how I can change the shape. So instead of having just a square, I could have a circle. Um, there are lots of things that we could do. We could even change the size. I could probably have an instance variable for a width and a height to determine the size of the brush. So I, I could talk about really small circles like we did in our original program. We had fill oval with uh, parameters of x, y, 4, and 4. And we can change the brush type. We can change the uh, colors. We can do a lot of different things here. So here are my red circles, tiny red circles. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.